This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. What do you get when you cross a potato with kofta? Probably something like this Libyan mabattam, but it's even better than the idea sounds. A layer of seasoned kofta is sandwiched between two thin layers of potatoes, then it's breaded and fried. I don't think I need to explain how good this combination is, and I think you'll agree. The first step to making these fried koftas is going to be making the kofta mix itself. You can use any kofta recipe you like, but to make real Libyan mabattam, we'll be preparing the kofta with some Libyan flavours. Every kofta starts off with ground meat, and this needs to have a relatively high percentage of fat, around 20 to 30 percent. We're using lamb mince for this recipe, but you can also use beef instead, and you'll need 250 grams of this. Place the meat in a bowl large enough to mix in, then we'll sort the other ingredients. Now, to turn minced meat into a kebab, there is one essential ingredient in every recipe, and that's an onion. By shredding and then adding an onion to minced meat, you are introducing an ingredient which is full of water, and that will keep the kebab meat moist from the inside out as it cooks. To do this, break out a box shredder like this, and then on the large side of the grater, shred an onion. You don't want to do this on the fine side of the grater, as that will just liquidize the onion, and instead you want to turn it into very small shreds like this. These shreds will disappear into the meat, and as it cooks, they'll break down and keep the meat moist. Add the shredded onion to the meat, and next, let's sort out some parsley. Fresh parsley is a very common ingredient in kofta, and it adds a fresh herby element to the meat. For this recipe, you'll need 30 grams of parsley, and you'll need to slice off the thicker sections of the stalks, then start mincing it to a fairly small size. I generally hate mincing herbs like this, but with kofta, it's really important, because you don't want to end up with a stem or whole leaf in your mouth. Instead, aim to get it about this small in size, and once it is, add that right into the bowl with the other ingredients. To bind that all together, we need some eggs, but first we have to separate the yolks from the whites. For the kofta mixture, we'll need one whole egg with an extra egg yolk, and then for the breading, we'll need two egg whites. So break an egg and separate out the yolk into a separate bowl, then crack over another whole egg. The two yolks will give the kofta a richer texture without it tasting eggy. In your other bowl, crack an egg, then separate out the yolk, and I just gave it to our cat. Add the two yolks to the bowl with the meat, and the other egg whites can be set aside until needed. Now we just have to add a few more ingredients, starting with one tablespoon of vegetable oil and one and a half tablespoons of tomato paste. To season, add in one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of paprika, then half a teaspoon of turmeric, three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. If you want, you could also add one teaspoon of the Libyan Bazaar spice mix, which we made in the Mbakbaka video, but without it, this will still taste great. All that's left is to get in there with your hands and start kneading it to combine all the ingredients. Make sure to scrape the bowl as you're mixing, and the mixture should clump together once everything is incorporated. It will also feel quite wet, and so to make it firmer, we're going to be adding some fine breadcrumbs. Start off by adding in two tablespoons of breadcrumbs, and then knead them together into the meat and see how the texture is feeling. You want the mixture to hold together kind of like meatballs, and so if it is still loose, add in more breadcrumbs until you feel it has firmed up. We used a total of three tablespoons, and then tested it by rolling it into a ball in our hands. The mixture should have a texture that is not sticky, yet should still maintain its shape when passed back and forth. When you have something like that, the mixture is ready, and so we'll set it aside while we prepare the potatoes. But before we do that, let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor, BetterHelp. If you've been struggling or having a rough time lately, BetterHelp wants to help you. For quite some time, I've been noticing a decline in my concentration, which has unfortunately come about at one of the busiest periods in my life. Work, YouTube, and the end of restrictions have all piled on and left me with too much to do and not enough time to do it all. That includes finding and going to a therapist, something I've been needing to do for a long time but haven't been able to fit in. And that's precisely why I started using BetterHelp, so that I can get the help I need at a time that suits me. BetterHelp starts by asking you some questions about yourself and what you are looking to get out of your time with your therapist. It then matches you with a professional licensed therapist who is trained to listen and help you. With over 20,000 therapists in their worldwide network, it found me a match with the expertise I need and they got in contact with me within 48 hours. At any time, I can log in and send them a confidential message and get timely thoughtful responses or book video or phone sessions. All of that is done in a private online environment at my convenience, and I found the sessions and resources from my therapist, David, really useful. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health and better health, and to make it even better, you can change your therapist for free if you ever feel the need. So if you're interested in finding your therapist, visit betterhelp.com slash middle eats, that's better H-E-L-P, and use code middle eats to get 10% off your first month. Thank you, BetterHelp. For this recipe, you'll need 500 grams of potatoes, and you want to get a variety that is good for french fries, since we'll be frying this later. 
These Maris Piper potatoes are in season and they'll be perfect for sandwiching the kofta, but first they need a good peel. Once you've peeled your potatoes, they need to be prepared for stuffing. The most traditional way to do this is to cut your potatoes into slices about 6-7mm thick. Once you've done that, the slices then need to be cut in half for about 3 quarters of their length. That effectively splits the potato slice into two sides, and then the meat goes in the middle. Personally, I find that clamshell shape to be a lot harder to stuff, and so we're using the easier method which involves two completely separate slices. This starts by cutting the potato into thin slices, and it's quite a bit harder to do this with a knife than I thought. You want to cut the potatoes to about 3mm thick, anything larger and they might struggle to cook. It's also important that you cut them along their longer side, that way you'll end up with larger size and button. In the end, my knife cut potatoes weren't that even, and so I switched to using a mandolin instead, and this ended up being a much better option. The slices from it were way more even, and they're pretty much 3mm every time. Just make sure that you stack your slices in their original position, because that will make your life easier when you come to stuff it. In the end, you'll have a bowl full of sliced potatoes like these, and you may need a bit more or less depending upon how much you fill them. Stuffing these is actually quite easy. All you need is two adjacent slices of potato. Remove the top slice and turn it upside down, then place a ball of the kofta mix on top of one slice. Press that into the potato and then spread it around so you have a roughly even layer. When you're happy with how it looks, add on the next layer of potato, then press the two together to sandwich the meat between them. Now just rotate the whole thing in your hand while pressing any overflowing kofta back between the layers, and if there's a load of excess, just remove it and carry on. In the end, you should aim to have a fairly consistent thickness, and the meat should run right to the edge of the potato, which should not be protruding or covering the potato. It might take you a while to use up all of the meat, but eventually you should have a plate full of them like this. The recipe ended up making 17 individual mbattan, and so if you want more, make sure to double the kofta amounts. After stuffing these, the next step is to bread them, and then immediately fry. I've got an oven tray over here which I've placed a wire rack on, and once they are breaded, I'll let them hang out here until I'm done with the rest of them. This will be a multi-stage breading process, and the first stage will be our flour. I've measured 50 grams of all-purpose flour into a bowl, and I'm adding in half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper to season. Give that a quick mix, then the next stage will be our egg whites. To the two egg whites from earlier, I'm adding two tablespoons of milk, then mixing that very thoroughly until well combined. Finally, the last stage is more breadcrumbs, and we've got 75 grams of fine breadcrumbs in this bowl. To bread the potatoes, place it in the flour first, and then give it a good toss so that all of the sides, top and bottom, are well coated in flour. You then need to brush off any excess flour, and then place that potato into the egg wash. Flip this over in the egg a couple of times, and then once that has been fully coated, move it over to the breadcrumbs. Again, this needs to be fully coated, so make sure that you're covering all of the egg in breadcrumbs. At the end, it should look like this, an obscure hockey puck looking thing covered in a load of breadcrumbs. Set it aside and then carry on until you've breaded all of the individual pieces. Before frying, prepare a plate by laying on some kitchen towels. Then in a heavy bottomed frying pan, add in about 1cm of vegetable oil. Turn the heat up to high and heat the oil until you can place one of the pieces in there and it starts to bubble and fry like this. When that happens, fill the pan with as many pieces as it can take, then turn the heat down to just above medium. On our stove, we ended up cooking these for 6 minutes on the first side, and after the time was over, we flipped them to reveal their golden brown colour. They then needed to fry for an additional 6 minutes on the second side, and when that was up, they were golden brown all over. I'd recommend you try one of the pieces first, and check the potato and meat are cooked properly before you pull out all of the rest. They then need to drain on that paper towel lined plate, and while they're resting, you can go in with the second batch. Here you can see the cross section of our fried and button, and the potato has cooked just right. The breading is crispy all over the bottom, and the kofta filling is moist and juicy. Like I mentioned at the start, this is one of those foods that is way better than I can describe, and I think you'll really enjoy them. Let's dig right in. Mm. Wow, that is one hell of a bite. That is definitely what you're missing out on. I could probably eat a dozen of these. What a fantastic combination. The crispy fried exterior is just perfect with the spice kofta filling, and there's just enough in there to keep you coming back for more. Now click here if you're after more crispy Middle Eastern foods.